Three sections were unsealed yesterday, the introduction, conclusion, and a section where a majority of the grand jury asserted that one or more witnesses may have committed perjury and recommended charges be filed. The identities of which witnesses the panel thought may have lied under oath was not revealed. Senator Lindsey Graham, one of several high-profile figures to be questioned, told reporters, I'm confident I testified openly and honestly. The unredacted pages revealed the jury unanimously concluded there was no fraud in the 2020 election. What the a panel, shock. <laughs> the panel also voted to release the entire report to the public. The judge said that would not happen before the district attorney investigation is completed. Former President Trump took the release to mean he would not be indicted, writing on his social media platform, quote, thank you to the special grand jury in the great state of Georgia for oh your God. patriotism and courage. Why are we, why are we reading this? Total why are we exoner reading this? Because it's fun. Why are we reading this? Because it's Take fun. It's so stupid. It's, it's, it's fun. It, it's I, you, just such nonsense. Well, it is, but it, it's beyond stupid. It, it is It is almost... Yeah. It, it, I'm at the point where I, I think I have to laugh because otherwise I'd cry. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, it, let, let's bring in Chuck uh, Rosenberg. Chuck, uh, the president's uh, babbling, uh, notwithstanding, um, uh, it, it seems that uh, there are uh, plenty of reasons uh, for, uh, for Donald Trump and others who testify to be very concerned right now about criminal charges. What was your takeaway from uh, just a little bit of the grand jury report we were able to see yesterday? Well, that's right. I mean, Joe, there's good cause for a whole bunch of people to be concerned. The district attorney in Fulton County has identified 20 or so targets, and a target is a likely or putative defendant. So, yeah, there's reason for people to be worried. It's certainly not, to Mika's point, a total exoneration, although it's possible that Mr. Trump doesn't understand what the word exoneration means. Mm. What I take away from the report uh, is simply this. A special grand jury sat for seven months hearing from scores of witnesses and believes that crimes have been committed. Now, it's not their job to indict those crimes. That's up to the district attorney. But she has a wealth of evidence, because don't forget, the important thing here is not that the grand jury wrote a report. The important thing here is that the grand jury heard all of this evidence, and all of this evidence is preserved for prosecutors to use at any subsequent trial that they may have, right? If, Joe, if the important fact is that you saw the light as green, and we put you in the grand jury and under oath, you testify that the light was green, that's substantive evidence of the color of the light. So if you change your story one day, at trial because you're nervous or scared or intimidated uh, and you say the light was red, we can use your old grand jury testimony as substantive evidence of what you actually saw, the truth. And that's incredibly important to, to uh, prosecutors. And that's why prosecutors put witnesses in front of a grand jury to lock in their testimony. And the district attorney has all of that at her disposal. Don't lose that point because that matters a lot uh, to prosecutors. Mm. But let's bring in right now political reporter for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Greg Bluestein. Greg, uh, what, what, what can you tell us about the report yesterday and what should we expect next? Well, first, as, as just mentioned, Donald Trump's uh, statement that he was exonerated is a flat-out lie. We still don't know uh, whether uh, the, the former president will face charges or members of his inner circle, but District Attorney Fonnie Willis has suggested that she'll seek charges. We just can't be certain uh, until she does. And if she does, we don't know what charges she'll seek, who she'll target, when they'll come. But we do we do know now that perjury charges are on the table. Um, and we know that the grand jur jurors were unanimous in rejecting Donald Trump's false claims of election fraud. And that's a good baseline where her investigation can start. Uh, we also know that prosecutors can, can exert leverage over those uh, witnesses who might have perjured themselves. And so that could flip and that could lead to other charges. And we also know that Bonnie Willis is not just looking at election fraud charges, she's also exploring uh, conspiracy charges using Georgia's pretty extensive anti racketeering law. So there's a lot of thing, different statutes that could be mm. on the table right now. 
Hey, Greg, you're, you're the GOAT down there when it comes to uh, covering local politics and, and local government in that, in that state. You know, we, we hear about Fannie Willis, Willis all the time in, this, in the context of this case. Not that many people who uh, follow this even closely know that much about her and, and what her kind of M.O. has been. Obviously, there's no case that she's ever uh, gotten involved in that's been this high profile or this consequential. But can you just talk a little bit about her, her background, her ambitions, uh, and how she's gone about doing that job in the time she's had it? Yeah, she is not to be trifled with. She's a hard-nosed prosecutor here who led some of the prosecution against the Atlanta school cheating trial that was national news, has been made into books and movies. Um, right now, even as we're talking, she's also leading prosecution against uh, a, 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 a massive gang, anti-gang uh, charges uh, involving different groups and different musicians and rappers. And so that's that's one of the biggest stories in Georgia as we speak. Uh, and she won an upset battle over a entrenched Democratic incumbent. Uh, she's a Democrat as well, but an entrenched Democratic incumbent, Fulton County District Attorney, who had been in office for years. Um, she's also facing re-election in uh, next year, so she's got to kind of look over her shoulder. And meanwhile, as we're speaking, Georgia Republican lawmakers are thinking about debating legislation that would make it easier for voters to recall district attorneys. It's not directly aimed at her, but it could be used against her.